the Reds, the Blues, the Greens, everyone in formation. Rick Mears brings them toward the start. The pace car is off the track. Danny Sullivan's car is rolling. Here comes the field. The green flag is out. The is underway. Mears got the jump on Legends Road. But the Andretti's were charging hard. Great battle for second spot, Larry. They're side by side, coming down the back straightaway. Michael on the inside, Rick on the outside. Michael's getting blow. Oh, boy, did they just get around. Rick Mears playing high. Gets around Michael, but they're still at it, going to four. It is Michael on the inside, and Mears on the outside. Mears has got him. Mears begins to pull away as they go down the main straightaway. A great battle for second position. Now Michael makes another move, looking to the inside. They're wheel to wheel as they head for turn one, and Michael has got him. And by lap 12, father and son were 1-2. Oh, well, we got a crash at one. We got a major crash at one. The car is in at least two or three pieces. Well, it looks like A.J. Flick was involved. When we saw him go by here very slow, it looked as if the left front wing was gone. It looks like A.J.'s going to park it because he was waving to the crowd. Debris from the incident damaged car 14, signaling the end of Foyt's legendary Indy career. And here's the green flag, a drag race to turn one again. Oh, they are side by side, and Michael's got him. Michael first, Mario second, Allen third, third. The green severed any family ties as Michael built up a big lead over his father. I was just about ready to put Rick Mears down a lap. I was literally one lap away from doing that, and I got a flat tire. And so I had to pit early. And so that that is what really change the complexion of the race. Danny Sullivan's engine has gone here on the main straightaway. The late yellow allowed Michael to make his final stop, giving the lead to Mears. Here we go. The field comes off the fourth turn. The green flag waves. Here's the final 13 laps of the race. I remember I knew I had to get him on the restart, and I knew John was there, so I knew we could trust him. And, and uh, when we were coming up, I had a good run on Rick, and, and all of a sudden, John pulled up high. Like, oh, beautiful. Well, Rick Mears made a great move down low. He leads the way. Come on, no, no. Andretti's got him going into short shoot. He's a number two, and Michael Andretti's got the lead. He took fuel on board, but Rick Mears is slower right now, about seven car lengths behind Michael Andretti, trying to get his first Indianapolis 500 win. You know, when we got to turn one, I just stayed on the bottom side, and, and you can go, but you're going to take the long way. And, uh, and which he did, and he went on around, so then we kind of, uh, you know, putting our head down and and I thought at that point, I think we're going to win the race because Rick didn't have anything for me all day long. So you wonder why would he have something for me now? And, uh, and then uh, going around in the very next lap, coming down the front straightaway, I saw Rick had a big run. Like, where did he get that speed? Now Mears goes to the outside, and Rick may have him. They move into the short shoot. Rick Mears takes the lead. We had the momentum. And so, you know, he, he you know, he could have. He could have moved more and, and tried to block me, but to his credit, he didn't, you know, and, and he's a racer, and, and he just he kind of took the middle of the road, you know, and uh, by doing that, it left the, the top door open. And Reddy is one of the toughest drivers, you know, you know, on the, on the grid, on the, on the track, and, and to see him make that move was, was outstanding, but that's, that's Rick Mears. As Mears began to pull away, Michael watched his dreams of an Indy win disappear. I was really puzzled and really disappointed because I knew the race was over. Because I knew I was I was as fast as I could go, wide open, and, and he was just inching away from me. And like, I can't believe I'm losing another one. Mario Andretti is slowing down in turn number three. I knew he was just trying to get another yellow and get, give Michael another shot at me. Because you know, I mean, Michael's always good on a race start, so it was a little unnerving at first. I never believed in brake checking guys. You know that that just messes up the rest of the field. It's not it's not the good right thing to do. But I wasn't going to let him go clean, so. What I did was I, I'd act like I was going to go. I'd pick up the pace and then level off. So when I saw the nose of his car drop, I knew he was off the throttle and on the brake, and that's when I'd let it go. So it kind of helped give me a little extra shot and, and made sure he didn't have the momentum to catch me. The green flag is out. Rick Mears has a good jump. He separates himself from Michael Andretti by 10 car lengths. We went into that race with the same game plan we always did, but that was the, of the four wins, that was the only one that worked out to having the shootout at the end that you always plan for. And um, and that's the fun part, that's what you do it for, to have that battle there. Rick Mears becomes the third four-time winner of the Indianapolis 500, winning the Diamond Jubilee Edition.
the 75th running of this great speed classic. The first one will always have its place. Um, but to me, each, each win got progressively better. For the simple fact of looking back, you know, I learned to realize more of what Indy meant uh, to win. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.